Hi, everyone. With everything that's going on right now, I know a lot of us are really being forced to stay inside, maybe even stay home, can't get to some of the classes or workshops maybe that we wanted to. I know that I've been asked to uh, offer some workshops and classes at certain seminars, weekend events, and those are all being canceled. So I thought in the meantime, if you really need to get your acting coaching going. First of all, of course, you can be in touch with me. We can schedule like a Skype session. Maybe that'll keep you going until your regular class starts up again. So do feel free to reach out to me about that if you'd like to set it up. But in the meantime, if you want to just get some stuff going on your own, I thought it would be a great idea to suggest to you some of my best recommendations for acting books. So if you're tucked in and you need something to keep you sharp, here are some of my suggestions. Let's start with this one first. This one isn't really a, a page turner because it's not narrative. It's not really a reading book. It's a resource book and it is called The Actor's Thesaurus Actions. This book is just a book of verbs, actions, which is where we as actors are always supposed to be living. So if you're working on a scene, you're working on a monologue and you're looking for the action, if you're breaking down beats, this is a great book to have. Find one word that seems kind of close to where you want to be. Look it up in here. Very often there'll be 20 more words to launch you from there. Some of them will be perfect. Otherwise, you can go to those pages and find other words. I use this book all the time, particularly when I am coaching someone through a monologue. It's just the perfect resource for that. So that is my first suggestion. Suggestion number two, let's go completely in the opposite direction. Dense heavy. You're going to read and read. You won't get through it fast. You would pour through this book. It is called The Intent to Live, not even The Intent to Act, by Larry Moss, who is still one of the great acting coaches working today um, and certainly has coached so many luminaries and A-list actors to their Academy Award performances. I will say for me as a Meisner trained actor, there is a lot of stuff that's more kind of Strasbourg method based. So it's not exactly what I might do, but it is. it has fascinating anecdotes and stories. His narratives about working with people like Helen Hunt or Hilary Swank are just really great interesting reads, but also give a, a really good perspective on how to engage in character analysis and really find yourself and the role coming together. So that is my second suggestion. Speaking of Meisner, there is a book about Sanford Meisner called On Acting, and it's a very interesting read about a very interesting and cantankerous old guy. Um, but in terms of learning Meisner technique, it would not be the book I would recommend. Rather, that would be a series of workbooks written by my Meisner teacher, nationally recognized as being a Meisner expert. He did study with Sanford Meisner himself. His name is Larry Silverberg. And there are a series of workbooks that he came out with that as long as you can grab two friends because you need to work in groups of three, you can really get a pretty far way through the process on your own with learning the Meisner technique. For me, it changed everything about me, not only as an actor and a director, but even as a person, how I understand listening and what we put out and what someone receives. It, it truly changed my life. I love the work. I love these books. I loved studying with Larry personally. So I would highly recommend these books if you're looking to get familiar with Meisner technique, which I cannot recommend highly enough. Next, a book called A Practical Handbook for the Actor. I think it's very interesting that this book comes out of the work that William H. Macy and David Mamet did together at the Atlantic Theater Company in the, I want to say late 80s. I, I think I'm pretty close on that. Um, I think that's interesting because if you read books like True and False or other books that Mammon has written, he's all about how you can't really teach acting. And then there's this theater company that comes out of the practical aesthetics work that they were doing at the Atlantic Theater Company. I think it is very, very useful. The word practical 
is the word when I work with acting students who I think are too emotionally invested, get too dramatic, go a little too far. I rein them in with this book because it is certainly practical. But if you are someone that is in the other direction where it's troubling, hard for you to get to your emotional core, to allow yourself to be broad in your emotional palette and to really live in a very strong way on stage, this probably isn't the best book for you. Still, it is a super quick read, literally two hours, and you can probably get through it and mark it up, which you should do if you look at my books. They all have highlights and notes and circles and arrows, like Arlo Guthrie would say. Whoever gets that reference, you must be <laughs> a little older if you do. Um, but it, for me, it's a great book because it makes the process very accessible and very simple, and I think it's highly useful for that reason. Finally, we come to the book that no acting student, no professional working actor, no anyone interested in the craft of acting should be without. I think it's fascinating that decades after this book was written, it is still not only in publication, it is available at small bookstores that aren't in theater towns, that aren't near schools with theater programs, just like kind of on a regular bookshelf in a Barnes and Noble sort of store, which to me speaks towards how seminal and important and really worthwhile it is. It's called Audition by Michael Shirtliff. That's how I've always said his name. I hope that I'm pronouncing it correctly. This book is invaluable. It is not only invaluable for how to approach an audition, a cold read, working with, with um, text not, as opposed to a monologue on an audition. It really just is great for how to work with text, period. The 12 guideposts start with relationship, which is where you should always start, and go next to what are you fighting for, which is action action, which is what we as actors should be engaged in. And it is just a wonderful book. Again, it's a read. It will take you a while, but you should have it. You should mark it up. You should refer to it all the time. So those are five books that I want to recommend for all actors. And as a bonus, I'm going to make a suggestion about a great book that I really wish I got royalties on because every time I work with someone interested in voiceover, I suggest they get this book. But specifically for voiceover artists, the book I would suggest you get is this one. It is called The Art of Voice Acting. And don't go by my <laughs> my cover because this I've had this quite a while, so it's old. There's a new edition. This is not what the book looks like anymore. But it is the same book written by James Alberger. And this is a fantastic book about voice acting. What to do on mic how to approach the business of acting. So it's both a how-to about the business and also a how-to about how to actually do voiceover well and how to work on mic. So those are my suggestions for if you're getting a little bit of cabin fever, being stuck inside with everything that's going on right now with coronavirus. And again, if you'd like to work with me remotely in the meantime, that might be useful for you, certainly be in touch and we can arrange to have that done. Please let me know what you think about these suggestions. If you've read any of these books or use them as reference, I'd love to know what you think about them. And if there's a book that you think is glaringly absent from this suggestion list that I'm providing today, I'd love to know what that book is. Maybe it's not on my shelf or maybe it is and I overlooked it and forgot how great it is. So in any case, be in touch with me because I do love hearing from you and your feedback on these things is very valuable to me. A new vlog again in two weeks, every other Friday on the Clouds and a Waffle YouTube channel, which please subscribe to because it's great for you, all this free stuff all the time. Great advice for actors and for human beings because sometimes I just share some wise advice and smart stuff that my mom told me. So like, follow, subscribe, be in touch. Instagram at C. Peterson or Instagram at Clouds and a Waffle. And there will be another post in two weeks. Until then, I hope you are staying safe, taking good care of yourself, trying to keep your fear at bay because this will pass. So hopefully you are healthy and well, and I will see you in two weeks.